Welcome back to the Fit Minute Podcast, Fitness for Rural People. I'm your host, Gabby Mazar. And on today's episode, I have Vera Stewart Lutz of Solutions Hypnotherapy. We're going to discuss uh, hypnotherapy and hypnosis, how it can help you with your health and fitness goals. And also at 20 minutes, we're going to have a 15 minute hypnosis hypnotherapy session. So if you're listening to this podcast, um, once you hit 20 minutes, if you're operating any heavy machinery, please stop. Or if you are at work, it might be best to come back and listen to it later. So that um, 15 minute session is going to be about confidence. And it's great and a great intro to hypnotherapy. Welcome back to the Fit Minute Podcast. I'm your host, Gabby Mazar, and today my guest is Vera Stewart Lutz of, what is your business, Vera? Solutions Hypnotherapy. Solutions Hypnotherapy, and we're going to discuss hypnosis. No, I'm not talking about that hypnotist that is on stage and makes you cluck like a chicken or bark like a dog or do tricks and all that stuff on stage and make fun of yourself. I am talking about... What is hypnosis, Vera? (laughs) Well, Gabby, that's a good question. (laughs) There are a lot of different definitions of hypnosis, um, but the definition that I like the most is that hypnosis is focused awareness while pushing aside the um, critical faculty of the mind. And the critical faculty is that analytical part of the mind. Okay. So um, it's a a very... um, that's the word. It's it's done with intent. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, a lot of people have a fear that a hypnotist can come and make you do things that you want to do, or hypnotize you when you don't want to be hypnotized, and mind control and all like that, that kind one of thing. commercial. Exactly uh, the Geico commercial. The Geico commercial where the guy's making the other guy cut his lawn and bring him a soda or whatever else. Right. Yes. <laughs> that I think that would be the traditional what people think of when you think about hypnosis. The hypnosis. Right. Yeah. But so, but in reality, you know, hypnosis is a partnership between the client and the hypnotherapist, working together to you know make the client's goals happen. So, it's, why would somebody come to see you and get hypnosis? What would be some things that you work with most with hypnosis? Right. One of the things I work with most is anxiety and depression, or just anxious thoughts in general. Um, so that's really the focal point of my practice, but um, so many other reasons, you know, weight loss is a huge one, of course, Um, and smoking, smoking, quit smoking, and sleep difficulties, and um, fear of public speaking. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, that is a big one. Um, There's just so many different applications. Um, So those are kind of the normal ones, but things that people don't think of typically are the physical reasons. You know, Mm -hmm. hypnosis is fabulous for um, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, It's great for pain management. And, you know, I think that we're gonna actually see an explosion of hypnosis being used for pain management in the next 10 years with this whole opioid epidemic that we have going on. Yeah. Yeah, so we need alternatives. Speaking of pain management, or I guess fear of moving along to fear of surgery or anxiousness with surgery, that's how you first got into or started thinking about hypnosis, correct? It is. Can you get into that story and tell us why you decided to pursue a career in hypnosis? Sure. (laughs) It's kind of a strange story, but um, in 2015, I became very, very ill with complicated diverticulitis, um, and I was actually out on disability for a year with that. Um, And I had surgery, and well, I had actually four surgeries during that time, Uh and a lot. I had 23 blood transfusions and 17 CAT scans, and all in like a three to four month period. And during that time, I was nauseous constantly, like 
there was never relief, basically. It was right. constant. Um, and I had a wound vac on my abdomen, which had to be changed three or four times a week. Oof. And that was really painful, really painful to have that done for me. Um, so once I got through all of that, um, I went back to my job that I had left, and I was a business analyst before I did this, and I just sat in front of a computer all day staring at a computer screen and really didn't enjoy it. And so after I went back to work, the company said, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to have a layoff, but before we do that, we're going to extend early retirement packages. And I was like, yes, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> so so I did. Uh, thank you. Yes, please. I'll take that. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> and so I did. So I took them up on the retirement package. And then I had to figure out what it was that I did actually want to do with my life. And mm-hmm. I knew that I wanted to do something where I was having an impact on people's lives because my surgeon and his staff had had a huge impact on me. They were so supportive during that whole journey of mine. And, you know, they really made a difference in my life and how they handled, you know, my situation. And so I knew that I wanted to do something where I could help other people as well, but I didn't know what. Yeah. (laughs) So I was, you know, on the computer trying to figure it out. And on Facebook, I kept getting these ads popping up to be a hypnotist or a hypnotherapist. And after a while, you know, I started thinking, hmm, maybe I should be paying attention to this. Yeah. <laughs> so I did. I actually went to the school. Even that was though advertising. that's targeted marketing for yeah. them anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but I went over to the school and did a tour of the school. And they offered me to come and sit in on class the next day. So I did and was immediately hooked. It was so fascinating. And just instantly you could see the power that it had for yeah. people. Um, You know, because we were experimenting and and getting demonstrations all the time, and it was just amazing. So I knew that that was it. That was the path that I wanted to take to help And you were ready. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So how does uh, hypnosis help with diet and exercise? Is, Is there something you can do? to, I guess, want to work out maybe? Because I know people have anxiety about going to the gym or, you know, your, uh, let's say, like mindful eating. So you eat, but you just eat because you're bored or you eat because you're just sitting there watching TV or maybe you don't necessarily eat because you're hungry. So how can hypnosis help with with diet and exercise since this is a a fitness podcast? Right. (laughs) Well, <laughs> hypnosis is wonderful at changing mindset. Okay. Mm. Gosh, sorry about my voice. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I think everybody's been sick and something's been going around. So yeah. <laughs> I think everybody will understand. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> but <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> yes, it's fabulous with changing mindset. Um, and not only that, but actually implementing mindfulness tools mm-hmm. into your daily life. So you can, you know, I can teach somebody the mindfulness tools and then place those tools as part of an actual hypno- hypnosis section. <laughs> now I can't speak. That's okay. A hypnosis session. Uh-huh. Um, so that just reinforces the use of those tools. And it's really helpful. So, for example, um, you know, you can just say that when you get up in the morning, you're ready to go and, and, and work out. And you visualize going to the gym and you visualize yourself, you know, actually, you know, pumping that iron or, you know, running on the treadmill or whatever it is that you want to do at the gym, um, you can visualize that before you even get there. And visualization is so very powerful. Um, You know, if you can see it, you can achieve it is a really common quote. Uh Um, And it's really true. And hypnosis puts that into, into play. And how, can you explain how it does this? No. <laughs> All right. Okay. I wish I could. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I mean, because we think about like vision boards or um, just goal setting and those types of things kind of are similar in, you know, reaching this. You're setting an intention, I guess it is. So mm-hmm. with hypnosis is basically calming the mind, setting an intention, right? Right. Kind of the same thing. Um, I know we can be. It doesn't have to be, but okay. Yeah, because I know we've talked about um, uh, like daily meditations or um, um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Um, affirmations. Mm -hmm. it, you know, that is something that you can kind of help with too. So you're, you're setting that intention. I'm getting up. I'm going to work out. I can see myself doing this. Mm -hmm. I can visualize myself doing this. I can see myself eating better and being healthier and living a healthier lifestyle. And right. so the, you work with people in a session to kind of set that intention. Right. And many people can't even visualize themselves at a thinner weight. Yeah. You know, if you're particularly overweight like I am, <laughs> you know, a lot of people have a, a really difficult time even visualizing themselves you know, in the mirror. And so that's something that we work with too, is actually stepping into that person that yeah. you want to be. Um, and that's very powerful. I love that. But um, even with visualization for exercise, mm -hmm. uh, they've been doing studies lately with MRIs and that kind of thing um, that show that when you imagine something, then it's actually as if your muscles were doing it. Like uh -huh. it's practice for your muscles. And athletes are the number one people that know that. You know, they go out and they practice on the field, but they practice before that too with visualization. Right. And yeah, exactly. Right, absolutely. And, and that's almost like practicing for real. It's just amazing. And what's nice is the science is actually starting to catch up with hypnosis and they are doing MRIs and showing in these studies, you know, the different things that are happening in the brain when you're in hypnosis. That things are actually changing. That they are changing. Why? We still don't know. Hmm. <laughs> but we're showing that, yes, they really are. Yeah. Yeah. So how can, how can hypnosis affect your physical, um, physical and mental well-being? Well, actually, you talked about it earlier. You know, with hypnosis, um, it really helps with stress reduction. Um, if you start practicing self-hypnosis, it's very much like meditation. Uh -huh. um, in fact, meditation really is a kind of hypnosis uh -huh. or self-hypnosis. So that's very calming to the, you know, the, that will have a positive impact on the entire body, mind and body. You know, your muscles relax, um, your stomach relaxes, getting back to irritable bowel syndrome. Your breathing. <clears throat> your breathing, mm -hmm. yes. Um, Part of self-hypnosis is deep breathing, and so you start practicing those deep breathing patterns, and then if you do have anxiety throughout the day, you can just incorporate that into your day, and that relieves that anxiety as well. Yeah, because so. many, many of us are stressed or have stressful jobs or lead stressful lifestyles or especially for entrepreneurs or solopreneurs, you, right. <laughs> your stress level is through the roof most of the time. So right. reducing stress is something that I've been working on myself right. this year right. because it causes a lot of other issues, you know, like autoimmune diseases or cancers or um, I don't know, stress, stress just does a number on you, bad stress. You, you have, you know, a good stress amount of stress, but if you're overly stressed, it, it causes a lot of health issues. So right. it's very difficult for people to kind of relax and kind of mm -hmm. feel okay right. that life is going to be okay. Right. <laughs> um, and stress is actually a big part of eating as well. You right. Know, people start feeling stressed. Yep. They start you know, shoving their face yeah. full and of that can actually go in either direction. You know, there are people that when they're stressed, they don't eat. True. Um, That's true. So you, you're either a stress eater or a stress right. non-eater. So right, exactly. That can definitely go in both directions, yeah. My husband is definitely a stress eater. Uh -huh. And so when he's at work and he's really stressed, he goes to the junk food machine mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. So, and that's really bad for him because he was diagnosed with diabetes a year ago or so. Oh. And so I've been doing a lot of work with him too and, you know, relieving that stress and, and he, giving him anchors so that if he is triggered, he can use his anchor, and I'll explain that in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he can use his anchor to calm down. And so he has stopped going to the junk food machine and has that's well, been a huge benefit for him. Wow. So um, speaking of the anchor, <laughs> um, I kind of want you to touch a little bit on monkey brain. Okay. <laughs> what monkey brain is, and then you can talk about what an anchor would be and, you know, how – so – Explain monkey brain. <laughs> okay. Well, monkey brain is just quite simply the chatter that goes on in your brain that really doesn't stop. <laughs> yeah. Like and if you can't sleep at night and your brain is just going and going and going, exactly. what, what would be a um, 
like something to, you can do at home to help relieve that? Uh, something that's really great is progressive muscle relaxation, where you're thinking about actually literally relaxing your muscles. And you can do that in various ways. You can just think of a wave of relaxation flowing from the top of your head, you know, down your body to the tips of your toes. Or you can uh, literally, you know, relax and, and tense and relax and tense your muscles as you go down your body. Um, so then you're focusing, you're, you're mindful of what you're doing on your body, and that shuts up that monkey brain that's yeah, just absolutely. chattering all the time. Uh, <laughs> and then um, the other part of monkey brain, though, is that chatter is often negative chatter. Right. Right, and so we're telling ourselves how awful we are right. all the time. Oh, that was so stupid. Why did I do that? Or you didn't you get know. something done. Or, right, yeah. and we mm -hmm. beat ourselves up all the time. And so with hypnosis, you know, you can change the way you think about yourselves and, and start changing the neural pathways so that instead of defaulting to negative self-thoughts, we start defaulting to positive self-thoughts yeah. and, and being kind to ourselves just as we would be kind to somebody else. Yeah, we're our own worst critics. We definitely And we can are. say, I, we would, I actually had this conversation this morning with a client of mine, and, and um, we say things to ourselves that we would never say to another person. Exactly. Negative, mean things, you know, that you would never tell somebody. You would never say that, so why do we say it to ourselves? So um, the mental aspect of health is is very important for the physical aspect of it because, you know, like we said, we talked about stress, but if you're telling yourself, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm stupid, you you will be those things because you've already decided that you are. So you're changing what you're saying to yourself, how you're talking to yourself to positively reinforce the better things exactly to reach that goal that you want to be, where you want to be, not just right. physically, but mentally as well. So, right. yeah. Now explain what your anchor would be, what an anchor is. An anchor is just quite simply a place on your body <laughs> that... Hmm, I don't think I've ever actually explained an anchor <laughs> before. So, okay, an anchor is when you blow up an emotion, a positive emotion, um, joy or confidence or something like that. So you're visualizing yourself or some image of positivity. You could imagine it as a balloon, and you blow up the balloon so that it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and expands more and more. And then once that's as big as it can get, you know, you're full of confidence or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, uh -huh. then you place an anchor, you touch some part of your body, and that place is an anchor for that. And then if you ever need to have, you know, a, a shot of confidence, then all you have to do is touch that anchor on your body, mm -hmm. and this confidence will flood through your body. It's amazing. Huh. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. I actually have never heard of that. I don't know if a lot of people have, but it is fascinating because so many of these things work that you don't, you know, you think it's hooey, but it's it's really not. And you're not making people cluck like a chicken. That's really not, not, you know, that's, <laughs> you're not, it's not one of those pinwheels where you're putting it, you know, the pinwheel in front of somebody's face or those glasses that you put on where it's like, whoa, <laughs> no. whoa, 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 whoa. No. So, um, and actually, hypnosis is uh, much more interactive than people tend to think of it, too. Uh -huh. You know, there's, like, basic hypnosis where it's the meditation-style hypnosis, and that's kind of what people think of aside from stage-type hypnosis where you're clucking like a chicken. Right. But, you know, hypnotherapy is quite interactive. And so, and it's not all done in that deep trance state. A lot of it is done in a light trance state. Right. Um, so, you know, you're very aware of what's going on, and... And we're going to do a quick hypnosis today. Um, what are we doing a hip, hip, hypnosis session on? We are going to work on confidence. Okay. We're working on confidence. Um, to preface this, if you are driving or doing anything, um, this is not something you want to be in a relaxed state, maybe sitting or um, somewhere you're not using heavy machinery. So we're going to do a quick session on 
confidence and you will get to see what a snippet of a session with her would be because how long is a normal hip- hypnotherapy session with you? Uh, it's about one and a half to two hours. One and a half to two hours. So mm-hmm. this is going to be about 10-ish, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and yeah, maybe, we'll go from maybe there. Maybe 20. Maybe 20. <laughs> All right. We can go about 20 minutes. So if you are listening to this, find a relaxed spot and we will get started, Vera. Okay. So go ahead and close your eyes. Take in a nice, big, deep breath. And release. Take in another big, deep breath. And release. And as you release that breath, just imagine all the tension just beginning to drain from your body. That feels so good. Now I'd like you to imagine that there's a pool of light above your head. Just a lovely shimmering pool of light dancing above your head. And as you watch, this pool of light spills over, rains down upon the scalp, sinks deep into your scalp. This light is full of relaxation. And as this shimmering relaxation sinks into your scalp, begins to also flow down over your forehead, over your eyes and eyelids, relaxing all the tiny muscles of the eyelids and all around the eyes, down over the cheeks and the cheekbones, relaxing your facial facial muscles. This relaxation flows around around the mouth and into the jaw, releasing any tension that may be there in the jaw. And now that relaxation is flowing down the back of the neck and into the shoulders, just softening relaxing all the muscles there in the shoulders. Might even feel like a great weight has been lifted from your shoulders. And now focus on your arms and feel that relaxation flowing down, down into the upper arms, past the elbows, down into the forearms all the way down into the hands, up through the hands, and all the way down to the fingertips. You may even feel a tingling in the fingertips. And if you do, it's a very pleasant sensation. Just a pleasant tingling in the fingertips. And now I'd like you to bring your attention back up those relaxed shoulders and feel that relaxation now spreading down the back, down the broad of the back, the spine, all the way down to the small of the back, around the sides and deep into the sides, deep into the abdomen, just relaxing all the muscles there. Now that relaxation is flowing into the hips, down into the thighs, loosening any muscles that may be tense in the thighs. Flowing down past the knees, into the shins and the calves. Flowing down past the ankles, relaxing the heels of the feet. Relaxing the bottoms of the feet. Spreading up to the tops of the feet. And all 
the way down to the tips of the toes. Feeling so relaxed. Just let go. It feels so good to just let go. And in a moment, I'm going to count down from five to one. And with each descending number, your level of relaxation will triple. Want that to happen. Allow that to happen. Five, sinking deeper and deeper down. Four, so calm, so relaxed, so peaceful. Three, letting go. Feels so good to just let go. Two, almost there now. Almost all the way down into that perfect hypnotic relaxation. And one, all the way down now, all the way there, perfectly calm, perfectly relaxed, so peaceful. And now that you are wonderfully focused and relaxed, I'd like to give you suggestions that your subconscious will easily and helpfully take on board because you can achieve anything with the power of your amazing subconscious mind. So from this very moment, you can begin to feel a self-awareness building stronger and stronger inside of you. An awareness that you can feel calm and confident now and in the future too, long after this session has ended. A calm kind of awareness, one which is not judging or critical in any way, only loving and supportive from this moment on. And you will immediately begin to notice the changes in your behavior and in the way that you think and feel now that you are becoming kinder to yourself. You are becoming more and more confident, more positive, so confident. And this wonderful positivity, this idea that you can become so very calm, so very confident now, will take root in your subconscious mind and it will begin to grow stronger and stronger like a germinating seed. And just like a seed, you will provide it with everything it needs to grow. Kindness, love, increased energy, warmth, and positive regard. Knowing that the more you respect, the more you love, and the more you cherish yourself, the better your confidence will be until that tiny seed will produce a shoot. And that shoot will begin to become visible above the level of the ground. And as that confidence begins and continues to become fed and reinforced, 
you can feel it growing stronger and stronger as each day goes by. And all of your positive thoughts and feelings will feed it so that it emerges from that tiny little shoot into a beautiful, healthy, and strong plant. Vibrant, full of energy, and graceful too. And these wonderful, positive ideas these amazing thoughts and feelings will make you feel more confident and look more confident too. Your body language will alter in subtle ways and you'll find yourself projecting this new self-confidence into every area of your life. And because your life is changing for the better now, you begin to allow yourself to look forward to what life might present you. And you'll be able to deal with whatever life brings in a calm, confident, and self-assured kind of way now. Because you recognize that life is a gift, a wonderful opportunity to grow and to change and develop into the kind of person that you have always wanted to become. Anything is possible when you set your mind towards your goals. And this new sense of self-esteem and confidence will push you forward in life so that you are ready and you feel ready now to effectively deal with whatever happens along the way. Your life path going forwards from now on will become a journey that you are excited to take always looking forwards and planning for the future. And as you make those plans, you will trust your decisions. And if that path ever has unexpected twists or turns, you will simply and calmly review your direction, get back onto the path that you've chosen and overcome any obstacles as you go along. Continuing to look forward with optimism and confidence. So with those positive thoughts in mind, it's time for me to bring this session to a close. And as I do, you'll hear me count from one to five. On the count of five, you'll be fully awake, feeling so refreshed, optimistic, and full of confidence, and ready to go on with your day. One, feeling returning to fingers and toes. Two, all energies in balance. Three, feeling calm, confident, and in control. Four, eyes feeling as if they've been bathed in cool, clear water. And five, eyes open, wide awake, fully alert, and feeling fabulous. Thank you, Vera. You're that welcome. was fantastic. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed that little snippet of what a hypnotherapy session with Vera would be. If you are interested in learning more, uh, you can find her at, if you want to go ahead and give a plug for us. Okay, Solutions Hypnotherapy, located in Mesa at 4111 uh, East Otto Valley Drive. 
Uh, Suite 209. And you also do recordings and phone or uh, yes, Skype? Yes, I can, I, we can work by Skype or Zoom is actually preferred these days. Yeah. Um, and we can even do it over the phone. It's still effective. Perfect. Uh, I will have more information on Vera and Solutions Hypnotherapy in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for having me. Yes, of course. Thank you so much for listening to the Fit Minute podcast, Fitness for Real People, with me, your host, Gabby Mazar. If you would like any more information on what we talked about today, you can find it in the show notes or you can find it on my website, www.healthybodyworksaz.com. Please leave us a review if you like what you hear or subscribe to our channel on iTunes or whatever platform you listen to. Join us next week to hear more stories about people just like you.